Well, Shalom Chevre once again, and let me just say, Shalom Chevre, that simply means Shalom as in peace or hello or simply Shalom. And Chevre means friends. Hello friends, and this is the way that you would typically greet one of your friends or a few of your friends, I should say, in Israel today. But we've been learning the Hebrew language and we focused on the consonants last time. We learned the 22 consonants and the way that they differ from one another. And we saw that these are the 22 consonants that God used to compose the entire Bible, the entire Old Testament Bible. And now we're able to read the consonantal form or the consonantal part of the Bible. Of course, the vowels we're gonna to learn today, uh, but you're able to read from cover to cover with the consonants and understand much of it. And as you look at this, you take a look at the Bible, you open your Hebrew Bible, right? And you go, for example, to Psalm 150, one of the favorite books that we love and that we go to when we pray or when uh, we sing even. You go to Psalm 150 and you look on the page and you see that these are the consonants that we learned. And so you try to read them and you look at Psalm 150 and you see, yes, I recognize these letters. I recognize the hey and the lamed and the lamed and the vav. And then there's a small space. And then you see the yod and you see the hey. And it says, hallelujah, hallelujah, a word that we're familiar with. Means praise Yahweh. Hallelujah. It's actually two words in Hebrew. Hallelujah means praise and it's a command. It's a command to a group of people, meaning all of you praise. And then Yah is the shorter form of the name of Yahweh. And so the speaker here is calling all of the people to praise Yahweh and using the name Yah as the more intimate form of his name. Praise Yah. That's what he's calling us to do. So you look at Psalm 150, you see these consonants and you say, I recognize them. But then you see that there's other things in the text. You see the dots and you see the lines and the dots are in different places and they look slightly different and the lines are different types of lines. What are those? Well, those are the vowels. And that's what we're going to learn today. And once you learn the vowels, we see that this makes the text extremely precise, that you can read it only a specific way and then you're able to understand the words exactly as they were intended by the author. Now the vowels, nikud, or the vowelization process is what we're going to focus on today. And as you think about the vowels in Hebrew, you see that there will be the short vowels and there will be the long vowels. And we're going to take a look at both of them. When we think about vowels, we want to look at both the way they look, how to call them, and how to read them so that we're able to read the biblical text. So we'll look at the short vowels and the long vowels and we'll compare them. And here's the good thing. For every short vowel, as you can see on the screen, there's going to be a corresponding long vowel. So there's a limited number of sounds, but they appear in different vowels because they're different words. And so this is what we'll learn today. So as you look at the short vowels, we'll begin with the vowel patach. Patach. And you can see this horizontal line beneath the aleph. Now let me just make a comment here. I'm using the aleph simply as an indicator where the consonant would go. It can be any consonant. And then the vowel will go either beneath the consonant, as it does in this case, or as we'll see later on, it can go on the side of the consonant. In this case, on the side of the aleph. But we'll see that later on in different vowels. So for the patach, this horizontal line, it's going to go beneath. A small, little, horizontal line that goes beneath the consonant and we see this and we pronounce this as the sound a, ah, like pat or cat. You hear the sound a ah, and you get that sound from seeing this vowel, which we call patach. Now the corresponding long vowel, 
appears beneath the consonant as well. The first one does. And this, this vowel is called a kamatz. Kamatz. Now, if you look at the vowel, you will see that it looks slightly different. It looks like a small T beneath the consonant. And the sound that this vowel makes, the vowel kamatz, makes the sound ah, like father. Ah. So the short vowel makes the sound ah, like cat or pat. And then the long vowel kamatz makes the sound ah, like father. Now, as you look at this, you see, well, there's another vowel here. It looks like another vowel. And you're right, it is. This here is the same kamatz, but you also see a hey after it. And the hey is the consonant hey that we learned, where it looks like the consonant. And what this is, is it's called a full letter vowel. Why is it called a full letter vowel? Well, it's because the vowel itself, the kamatz, which we pronounce as ah, comes attached with a hey. It's always going to look like this, this specific vowel, the full letter vowel. And it'll appear at the end of the word. So on the one hand, we have a kamatz without the hey. On the other hand, we have the kamatz with the hey. This is a long vowel. And then this here with the hey is a full letter vowel. Now, let me just make one more side comment as well. By now, the distinction in sound between these vowels has disappeared. So, if you see this patach, which I said is pronounced as a, ah, like cat, and then you see this kamatz, which I said is pronounced as ah, as in father, you go to Israel today, they're going to pronounce it the same way. It's always going to be ah, like father. You see a patach? the short vowel here, it's going to be ah like father. You see the kamatz, it's going to be ah like father because the distinction has disappeared. So you just remember this, but you remember that historically there was a difference. But when you go to Israel today, you're not going to hear this difference. And that's okay, because for us, we're going to be reading the Hebrew Bible. We'll see the distinction on the page. But when the people read it or when we read, the, we, we read the text, we don't have to pronounce the difference. We'll still know the meaning and the difference between the meanings of the words based on what we see on the page. So we move forward from this. The second vowel that we have is the three dots beneath the consonant. And once again, I'm using the olive here only as a symbol, as an indicator where the vowel will go. It'll go beneath the consonant. And these three dots are called a segol, segol. And the sound these three dots make is e, e, like as in met, e. The corresponding long vowel to this is two dots. And the sound it makes is a, like eight, five, six, seven, eight. That would be the two dots. But as you look at this, you also see that there's an additional vowel, an additional long vowel. And similarly to the vowel that we studied with the kamatz hey, the full letter vowel, this here is also a full letter vowel. Why is it a full letter vowel? Because we have the vowel itself with a consonant. So here we have the tsere, two dots, and then we have the yod, tsere yod. So when we think about the short vowel, vowel we have the segol, makes the sound e eh, as in met. Then we have the tsere, the long vowel with the two dots only, like eight. And we have the full letter vowel, which is the tsere yod, tsere yod also makes the sound eight, just like the long vowel eight, sorry. Then we have the letter, the vowel, here, here. And this is simply one dot beneath the consonant. And it makes the sound e, like machine, 
for example. E. So you have one dot, it's called a heric, and it makes the sound E like machine. Now you have a corresponding long vowel to this, and this is going to be a full letter vowel because it appears with a consonant. So you have a dot, which is a heric, with a yod, which is a consonant, and the two of them together make this vowel, and the sound that it makes is e, just like we saw machine. Now as we go forward, we see that there is a vowel with three dots that is diagonal. Okay, you have one, two, three dots that go slightly down and to the right. And the, the vowel is called kibbutz. Kibbutz. And the sound that it makes is ooh, like the letter puts, like ooh. He puts the book on the table, the sound is U. As you go to the long vowel, you will see that there is a corresponding line, like the Vav that we learned, with a dot in the middle. And this vowel is called a Shuruk, a Shuruk, or sometimes people refer to it as a Shuruk, but a Shuruk. And the sound that this makes is U as in sure, right? Sure. Now again, when you think about these two sounds, puts or sure, there's a slight difference and that's a historical difference. You go to Israel today, you're not going to hear the difference. It's going to be the same U sound. Sure, puts, book. It's all the same because the sound is so close to one another. But when you think about the short vowel, you have the three dots, it's called the kibbutz. And then you have the long vowel, and it's called a shuhuk. Now we move forward, and here we have a small little t beneath the consonant, and we call this a kamatz chatuf. Kamatz chatuf. And the sound that it makes is the letter o. Oh, o. Oh, just like the word whole. Okay? Oh. And if you go to the corresponding long vowel, you will see that in this case there's a consonant and then there is a small dot that appears to the left and above the consonant. And this will be called a holam, a holam, or sometimes referred to as a holam. And it also makes the letter O, makes the sound O. Now, as you think, as you look at the screen, you see that there is another one. There is what we call a full letter vowel. And in this case, it's the letter Vav with the dot above it, also to the left of the consonant. And it's a full letter vowel because it appears with the consonant, but it makes the same sound O. Oh. Okay, so you have the short vowel, which makes O, oh, and then you have the long vowel, which makes O, and then you have the full letter vowel, which makes O. Why the difference? The words are spelled differently. And so to distinguish between the words and between the spelling, you have the different vowels. And we'll learn about this later on. Now, as you look at these vowels, by now I'm sure you've recognized that there are at least two vowels that look exactly the same. And it's this letter kamatz chatuf, the final one of the final uh, vowels that we learned, and the vowel kamatz, which is a long vowel. Now one at the bottom is pronounced o, and the other one we learned is pronounced a, ah, and they look exactly the same. One is whole for the short one, one is father for the long one. How do you make a difference? How do you know how to pronounce it? We're going to learn the differences. We're going to learn how to pronounce it in the future. We're going to get to it. We're going to have a special lesson and specific instructions on how to make the difference, how to distinguish between the vowels and distinguish between the words. But for now, you can just know that there is a difference, even though they look the same. And now, 
as you take the Bible out, as you look at the text before you, and as you turn to Psalm 150, for example, you can look at the text, you can see the consonants, and you can see the vowels, and you can read the entirety of the text from Genesis until the very end. You can read the whole thing, you will recognize some of the words because some of the words are very familiar to us, like Shalom or Hallelujah, and you will see these. And other words we'll learn as we keep going forward. And so in Psalm 150, as you can see on the screen, you will see the letter He with the vowel Patach below it. Then you will see the Lamed with two other dots. We're going to learn those later. Another Lamed. And then you see this Vav with a dot, which we learned is called a Shuruk or a Shuruk sometimes said. Then we have the letter Yod with a Kamatz and a He after it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We have learned how to read this word. And as you look at the rest of the psalm, you'll be able to read the rest of the psalm as well. Will you be able to understand all of it? Not all of it, but you'll be able to capture some of the words and you will definitely capture the sense of the word Hallelujah or Hallelujah El or Hallelujah Who. What do all those words mean? Well, they're all related to the word Hallelujah, which means praise. And then it says Hallelujah, praise Yahweh, Hallelujah El, praise El. What is El? Elohim. Praise God and a variety of other expressions that we have not learned yet, but we will learn as we keep going forward. So now you're able to read the text from Genesis to Exodus to Leviticus to Numbers all the way through the Old Testament and be able to see what the text is saying. And with time, we'll understand some of the words, more and more of the words, and exactly what the text means. Now let me make another comment here. Before these vowels that we just learned were even put into the text to help us to read and to recognize the specific meaning of each of the words, there were vowels that were connected to the consonants. And these consonants were used to help the reader understand exactly what the word means. And these consonants were called matras lexionis. Matris lexionis is Latin, which means mothers of reading. And what does that mean? Well, who helps you to learn how to read when you're a kid? It's your mother, right? And this is kind of the idea. Of course, I'm using an analogy, but that's kind of the idea. These consonants were used to help the reader read the words, and they were used as vowels. But let me show you exactly what I mean. There's only a few of these consonants, and they were used as vowels. So, as you can see on the screen, you have the letter He. He is one of the consonants that was used as a vowel. And the vowel that it produced, or the vowels that it produced, were A, E, or O. And so, the He, the consonant He, would appear, for example, at the end of a word, and it would say that there is a vowel here. Now, as you look on the screen and you, you look at the example here, you have the letters Sheen, Lamed, Mem, and He. Well, this final letter He tells me, the reader, that I'm supposed to pronounce a vowel here. And the way that I know how to pronounce the vowel is by knowing the word. But I'm not going to misread the word because there is a He here. So what is this word? This word is Shlomo. What is Shlomo? It means Solomon. It's the name of Solomon. But by having the letter He here, the consonant He, it tells me, make sure you pronounce the vowel O at the end. Don't say Shalom, which means completely something else, means peace. Say Shlomo. Say the O at the end because I'm talking about Solomon. So the He was used as a vowel. Now the olive was also used as a vowel in different parts of the word. And you can see here that it appears in the middle of the word. The sound that the olive made or the vowel that it made was a, e, and e. And in this case, we have the word that, is, that consists of the consonants tzadi, 
Vav, Vav, Aleph, and Resh. It's a Vav. It means neck. Now, because there's an Aleph here, I know that I'm supposed to pronounce the sound A ah in the middle of this word, Tzavar, which means neck, which gives the word the meaning neck. But this Aleph here tells me, make sure you pronounce the sound A ah here. Don't skip it, pronounce it, and that way you'll get the correct meaning of the word. The Yod, the consonant Yod, was also used to help us read the text. It was used as a vowel to help us understand that you pronounce the specific vowel here. And the vowels that were associated with the Yod are E and E. So you look at the example. The word is Shin, Yod, Bet, and Resh. The word is Shiber, Shiber, which means he broke or he shattered. Now, the fact that there's a Yod that appears here tells me that I'm supposed to pronounce the E here. Shiber, not something else, not Shavar or Shover or something else. I'm supposed to pronounce the letter E, Shiber, he shattered something. The Yod is used as a vowel here to let me know, pronounce this vowel here so that you know what the proper meaning of the word is. Okay, and finally we have the letter Vav, or the consonant Vav. The consonant Vav was also used as a vowel. And the vowel that it was used for was U, or I should say the vowels that it was used for was U and O. And here the example that we have is the Lamed, Vav, and Aleph, which means Lo, Lo, means no or not. Okay, and the way, the fact that the Vav appears here tells me that it's supposed to be the sound O or it could be the sound U, but it's not A, La or anything else. It tells me that there is a specific vowel here and the vowel that I know that the Vav is associated with is O or U. And so I pronounce this here as Lo, knowing that the word is a negation. It's not or no. And so this gives me the meaning of the word. Now this helps us read certain words without the actual consonants, the ones that we learned a little bit, uh, a little while back. So if I put this word on the screen without those specific consonants, I'm able to figure out what this word is here, right? I have kof, lamed, yod, Pei, Vav, Resh, Nun, Yod, and He. And so with the consonants and then with those consonants that are used as vowels, I'm able to read the word. And you can try reading the word. Give it a shot and see, can you figure it out? Or can you even come close to figuring out? And I think you'll be able to. Now let's look at this together. The word is Ka, li, fo, rni, ya, California. Right? So you have the consonants ka, then you have the vowel a, then you have the consonant la, and then you have the yod, which is used as a vowel. It's a consonant, but it's used as a vowel here. Then you have the consonant fa. Fo, and you have the Vav here, which is a consonant, but used as a vowel. And so I have the O here. Then you have the R, N, and then E. And I have the Hiric Yod here, which tells me that it's an E sound. And I finally have the A, the Kamatz He, the long vowel, the full letter vowel at the very end, which tells me that it's California. Now this is just to help us understand that before they even had those specific vowels that we learned just a few minutes ago, they had these consonants that they used as vowels to help the reader understand how to read the biblical text. 
what the word actually and specifically said so that there would not be any misreading of the text. And this helped the accurate and precise reading of the text. So now we have learned the consonants and we have learned the vowels, which means that you're able to read the Bible from Genesis in the Hebrew order until the end of the Old Testament, Second Chronicles, or in the English order from Genesis through Malachi. But you're now able to read the Bible in the Old Testament in its entirety, and you will be able to understand some things, not all of the things, but we'll learn more and more as we go. But what do you do? Do you open the Bible? Do you read the Bible? Absolutely. Of course, I encourage you to read the Bible. Challenge yourself. Read the text, but I won't understand anything you're thinking. That's okay. You'll read the text and as you keep going and going and going, you'll get more and more and more and it's going to become more and more familiar to you. And by, uh, with, through this exercise, you'll become fluent and proficient in reading the biblical Hebrew text. And we'll see you guys next time with the next lesson to learn the Hebrew Bible.